I don't know why Dion's going out with a high school boy. They're like dogs. You have to clean them and feed them, and they're just like these nervous creatures that jump and slobber all over you. Ew! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! Clueless is a 1995 teenage coming-of-age film directed by Amy Heckerling that would find box office success, positive reviews, and would quickly become regarded as one of the best teen films of all time. Alicia Silverstone stars as Cher Horowitz, an extremely stylish, popular teenager living in a mansion in Beverly Hills, California with her wealthy litigator father, Mel, played by Dan Hedaya. Daddy! Cher, please, don't start with the juice again. Daddy, you need your vitamin C. Where's my briefcase? It's been a couple months now, so I said we'd go out to Malibu. Don't tell me those brain-dead lowlifes have been calling again. They are your parents. Cher's mother died during a liposuction procedure when Cher was just a baby. She attends high school alongside her similarly wealthy and popular best friend Dion Davenport, played by Stacey Dash. It's not even 8.30 and Murray is paging me. He is so possessive. Ugh, tell me about it. This weekend he called me up and he's all, where were you today? I'm like, I'm a grandma. Dion and her boyfriend Murray are in this dramatic relationship. I think they've seen that Ike and Tina Turner movie just too many times. Cher decides to mastermind a romance between Miss Geist, played by Twink Kaplan, and Mr. Hall, played by Wallace Shawn, in the hopes that it will mellow the teachers out and allow Cher to negotiate better grades. Josh Lucas, played by Paul Rudd, the son of one of Mel's ex-wives to whom he was married for only a few weeks, stays with Cher and Mel as a house guest during a break from college. His more mature-minded but socially conscious mentality clashes with the more vain and superficial share. Josh, are you still growing? You look taller than you did at Easter. I don't think so. Doesn't he look bigger? His head does. So, Josh, have you given any thought to a little discussion about corporate law? Uh, Yeah, you know, but I think I'd really like to check out environmental law. What for? You want to have a miserable, frustrating life? Oh, Josh will have that no matter what he does. At least he knows what he wants to do, and he's in a good college. I'd like to see you have a little bit of direction. I have direction. Yeah, towards the mall. Which reminds me, where's your report card? It's not ready yet. What do you mean, it's not ready yet? Cher meets a new transfer student named Ty Frazier, played by Brittany Murphy. Awkward and giving off ugly duckling vibes, Cher decides to give Ty a makeover, helping to boost her confidence. We should do something good for mankind or the planet for a couple of hours. Hey, Brainiac. Ugh, the dreaded X. Ty, this is Josh. Nice to meet you. Hey, you know about this stuff. I want to do something good for humanity. How about sterilization? (laughs) So what do you think? I'm amazed. That I'm devoting myself so generously to someone else? No that you found someone even more clueless than you are to worship you. In the meantime, Cher pursues a romantic relationship with a handsome new student named Christian Stovitz, played by Justin Walker. Nice pile of bricks you got here. You drink? No, thanks, I'm cool. I'm not offering, I'm asking you if you drink. You think I give alcohol to teenage drivers taking my daughter out? Hey man, the protective vibe I dig. What's with you, kid? You think the death of Sammy Davis left an opening in the Rat Pack? Christian. Doll face. Handsome. Stunning. You're not letting her go out like that, are you? Cher, get in here. What's up, Daddy? What the hell is that? A dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. It looks like underwear. Go upstairs and put something over it. Yeah, I was just (laughs) going to. Unfortunately, the aloof and naive Cher seems to be unaware as to why the fashion-conscious Christian isn't picking up on Cher's romantic advances. You shall be my body servant, instructed. All of you, come with me. My feet are cold. Thanks. 
In the meantime, Ty becomes very popular, soon overshadowing Cher. What was happening? Dion asking Ty for sex advice? Ty being the most popular girl in school? It was like some sort of alternate universe. Also starring Donald Faison as Dion's boyfriend Murray, Elisa Donovan as popular click friend Amber, and Brecken Meyer as likable slacker Travis, this film had its origins in the early 1990s. Writer and director Amy Heckerling, best known for the iconic 1982 high school film Fast Times at Ridgemont High, as well as other hits including the first two Look Who's Talking films, was asked to write a television show about teenagers in high school. However, she was asked to focus on the cool kids and not the nerds. Heckerling said her most successful character she had ever written was Sean Penn's Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She decided the reason he was so popular was partly because he was always positive and happy. Heckerling decided to write the character of Cher as sort of a female, non-stoner version of Jeff Spicoli. Heckerling also took inspiration from the 1816 Jane Austen novel Emma and sat in on classes at Beverly Hills High School to get a feel for the atmosphere of teenagers in 1994 Southern California. Alicia Witt, Carrie Russell, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, Tiffany Thiessen, and Reese Witherspoon were all considered for the role of Cher. Amy Heckerling had remembered Alicia Silverstone from her role in the Aerosmith music videos for the hit songs Cryin' and Crazy, the second of which she starred in alongside Steven Tyler's daughter, Liv Tyler. Both music videos were among some of the most popular and most played music videos on MTV in the mid-1990s. Alana Ubach and Leah Remini auditioned for the role of Ty, while Jeremy Renner, Zach Braff, and Ben Affleck auditioned for the role of Josh. For the role of Cher's father, Mel, Jerry Orbach was offered, but was unable to take the part due to his commitments on the NBC television series Law & Order. Harvey Keitel was also considered for the role. Dan Hedaya ended up in the film and considered this movie as one of his favorite filmmaking experiences. Hey, you. Anything happens to my daughter, I got a 45 and a shovel. I doubt anybody would miss you. Stacy Dash was the oldest cast member among those who played students. She was 29 years old at the time of filming, portraying a character nearly half her age. Alicia Silverstone actually did not know how to pronounce Haitians correctly. Like right now, for example, the Haitians need to come to America. Director Amy Heckerling told the crew not to correct her because she liked it so much and wanted it to be in the film. Amy Heckerling herself makes a cameo as the maid of honor in the end wedding scene. She is also in the bouquet catching scene, struggling to catch the flowers behind Alicia Silverstone. The movie was filmed in five weeks between November and December of 1994 in Los Angeles, California. While filming the movie, Paul Rudd was mugged and had his backpack stolen, which held the script for this film. During the game of Suck and Blow, the cast was unable to sustain the breath to make a real credit card pass from mouth to mouth. A prop card made of cardboard was substituted and still did not work. Holes were drilled into it to make it easier, and when that failed, the whole cast had their lips heavily coated in chapstick to force the card to stick. The films that Christian watches on video with Cher, 1959's Some Like It Hot and 1960's Spartacus, or as Cher says, Some Like It Hot and Spartacus, provide clues as to his sexual orientation. Cher's last name in the film is Horowitz, but on the report card it says Hamilton. This might be an in-joke, as director Amy Heckerling's previously directed hit film Fast Times at Ridgemont High featured a character named Stacy Hamilton, played by Jennifer Jason Lee. One of the promotional items distributed to tie in with the film was a booklet called How to Speak Cluelessly. In it was a lexicon of what became invented terms for the clueless world, some of which became part of real teen lingo at the time, like as if. Oh my god, I'm totally bugging. 
This film spun off a television show of the same name starring Rachel Blanchard as Cher with Stacey Dash, Donald Faison, Elisa Donovan, Twink Kaplan, and Wallace Shawn reprising their roles from the movie. It aired on ABC from 1996 to 1997 and then on UPN from 1997 to 1999. Released on July 19, 1995, Clueless grossed a total of $88 million, which made it a box office success. I remember the first time I ever saw this movie. It was in December 1995, right after it was newly released on videotape. My older sister received this movie on VHS as a Christmas present that year, and we watched it several times. I remember my sisters and I cracking up over the scene where Stacy Dash's character Dion accidentally turns onto the freeway. We'd rewind that scene over and over again, laughing our asses off. Keep your hands off the wheel at all times! Ah! This movie marked the feature film debut of actor Paul Rudd, whose work I greatly enjoy. He would go on to star in many successful films and would find huge success playing the Marvel superhero Ant-Man in the 2010s and 2020s. It was the first time I ever saw a movie with Brecken Meyer, who would go on to star in films including Road Trip, Rat Race, and Garfield the Movie in the early 2000s. It began the film career of Brittany Murphy, who had done mostly television work prior to this. Now, Amy Heckerling is one of, if not my favorite, female directors. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Look Who's Talking, Look Who's Talking 2, Clueless, Loser. The films she makes are fantastic. Do I like this movie as much as Fast Times at Ridgemont High? No. Fast Times at Ridgemont High is literally one of my personal all-time favorite films, probably in the top ten, maybe even in the top five all-time for me. Fast Times was more realistic, definitely more adult-oriented, and plus it was 1982, not 1995. I've always preferred the 1980s culture over the 1990s. Even as a kid back in the 1990s, I felt the same way. I saw Clueless when it was new in 1995, probably five to seven years before I ever saw Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I would probably go ahead and give this film a solid seven stars, but due to its 1990s cultural influence and the fact that I saw it when I was so young when it was brand new, I'll go ahead and give it an eight star rating. I recommend the 1995 comedy teenage film, Clueless. Clueless.